Tony, you knew when you took the job that at some point you'd be going down to face Clemson down there. You talk to your players sometimes about blocking out the outside noise. Is this a week where you have to do that yourself? Most definitely. Um, I, I need to apologize to some family members, some folks that have reached out. They've called me. I have not answered. I have not called back. Uh, I eventually will get back to you. Uh, but, but yeah, it's, 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 it's been some requests and people wanting to talk. But, man, I have a responsibility to this football team, this football program, uh, to, be, uh, to be laser focused. And, and that's one of the things that I learned uh, from where I came from is just how to, to block out the noise. So, yeah, this is one of those weeks where – uh, some people are mad at me right now, but I promise you, I love you. I just need to focus. <laughs> yeah, uh, when you brought Kobe Pace yep. here, did you envision the type of year he's off to now, halfway through this season? And are you seeing some of the things that that he did at Clemson when he had his breakout year a few a few seasons ago? Yeah, and and relationship is is well it was well established with Kobe uh, prior prior to him getting here and and. Uh, reason I wanted to coach him uh, when I first saw him is because of of the upside and the potential, and so just happy for him that it's all you know coming together. And um, you know I know he probably would have wanted it to happen faster uh, than it did, but there's natural transition uh, that takes that takes place, and uh, I'm just excited that uh, uh, that he's having the opportunities that he's having and he's taking advantage of them. A lot of guys missed the last game, including mm -hmm. Antonio Clary, Chris Terry, Troy Harris. Any updates on them? Yeah. Also, Mikhail Bowley. So, so Bowley uh, practiced today, so Bowley should be the Bowley should be good to go. Uh, really, was precautionary, just making sure that everything was was good to go with them big guys. When they have them knee braces out on the field, it's hard to to see structurally where they're at. But he uh, he practiced today, so he should be good to go. Clary's pushing hard. I don't know if this will be the week um, uh, that we get Clary, and then Trail will be down for a couple. Trail ended up. Uh, deciding to have surgery, which was the right thing. Just a small bone fragment uh, that was in his knee, kind of like what happened to Chico last year. Just something jarred loose uh, and they had to go in and take it out. A uh, fragment not quite as big as the one Chico had, uh, but still he'll be down for a couple weeks. And uh, is there anybody else? I'm trying to think. Who? Oh, Tyree. No, Tyree practiced today. He should be, he should be good to go. Yes, mm -hmm. Sedarian practiced today, so he should be, he should be good to go. Yeah, Coach, I know a lot of this week is always focused on the past and going back to kind of where you started and everything, but is the, how have you developed, how have you changed since arriving here at Virginia and kind of having this new experience? Yeah, I think uh, one of the ways is, is I had to learn how uh, – Kind of how Virginia works, you know, all the way, all the way around. Uh, just learn, learn the environment uh, that I'm in, and and so that I can can adapt uh, to be the most uh, the most effective. And and there are some things that uh, that that I brought in the door that that worked where I came from that that just weren't as applicable uh, here. Uh, and then, so they had to be tweaked. And so I think uh, just having a better understanding of, of how the university works, how the athletic department works, just kind of how uh, the relationship is, you know, with 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 the program, with the community, with the fans, all of that. You know, I've had to uh, I've had to learn that. So I, I'd say that's probably where the most amount of growth has taken place. And uh, then also too, you know, learning how to. Um, build relationship with the student athletes that I have, right? Because, um, uh, uh, you know, obviously the demands are a little bit different uh, here. Um, so, you, so you're dealing with, uh, you know, different, you know, different type of young man. Um, so I had to learn, uh, learn that and then learning new coaches, right? So there, there weren't as many uh, folks that, that came uh, from where I came from with me. And so, so I've had to, to learn uh, how to kind of, you know, go back and and kind of start at the beginning as opposed to when I first got here man I was running full speed you know expecting everybody to catch up but they they they, they didn't quite understand uh, uh, why I was sprinting so fast or why I was doing the things the way that I did things but I think now there's a much better understanding um, both ways a handful of other guys have played a game or two but mentor and Courtney are the only true freshmen mm -hmm. who have basically played in every game Obviously, you got a lot of experience at some positions. Do you have a sense of that first year class now about how how much it ultimately will contribute? Yeah, I think uh, you know those guys from the time they showed up kind of kind of stood out as guys that 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 will probably be able to make the transition quicker and be ready to go and uh, and then also depth on, at some other positions. You know, for for some guys has has kept them kind of. Uh, working with the uh, with the scout team, uh, but we hope that uh, down the stretch we can take advantage of the, at least the four game rule with a, a lot of our young guys. Um, but you never know injury wise, there may be some some other young guys that that, that get elevated up uh, pretty quickly. 
no turnovers for Andrea <laughs> for a few games, knock on wood for you. Knock on wood. Um, where have you seen him grown the most, and how would you evaluate that progression? Last that area years? right there of just, you know, taking care of the football. You know, I think he's, he's, he's learning every single week kind of the totality of the job that he has, right? Uh, it's, it's a big transition when you, when you go from high school to being, you know, the starter, you know, at the, at the power, power four level. Uh, there's a lot that you're responsible for. Uh, so I think each week he's learning. And the first thing, the biggest thing is just taking care of the ball. Like he's, he's grown in that area and, and uh, he's understanding that it's, it's preparation that leads to that um, so that, that you know, he can be decisive. Uh, and when he's decisive, man, he's very effective too. Um, so, and then taking care of the ball when he's running, Right, I've, I've seen him grow in protecting himself, running the football, right? You've seen him slide a little bit more, get down, step out of bounds, so he doesn't take those unnecessary hits. And I think he understands now that's not, a, that's not an indictment or, or saying that you have a lack of toughness. That's actually being smart because you're, you're the quarterback. You don't need to take those hits. I know that you'll drop your shoulder. There's no question. I know how competitive and tough you are, uh, but I need you to, to, to be upright, right? I don't need you to get, get a shoulder or an elbow or something because you're, you're taking an unnecessary, unnecessary hit. And I think he's, you know, he's growing with his, with his leadership in the huddle. Uh, with the guys of you're starting to see him now uh, assert his voice a little bit more and, and man telling guys where to get lined up how to get lined up you know uh, challenging them in the right way uh, so you're just starting to see him step into that fullness of the of the position sure. coaches hate playing their friends and uh, <laughs> I can't imagine you having anybody closer to you in, yeah. in this sport than Dabo um, how awkward is that part of it going to be and 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 just how just describe your relationship. Yeah, how close I you think. Guys are. I think before the game, uh, and again, I, to be honest with you, I really haven't had a ton of emotion, you know, going into it. Like it's, it's really there's so much that goes into preparing for for a game. That's really all I've been focused on, uh, and then I've also been mindful too that that I did not want this game to be about me. And I told the players that, like, 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 this ain't about me. This is about you guys going down there and playing your best game. And my job is to is to help prepare you. I'm pretty sure pregame, you know, there'll be some smiles and some laughs, and uh, all of that'll be good. But once, uh, you know, once they blow the whistle and kick the ball off, like it's like any other game. To be honest with you, you really don't pay attention much to what's on the other sideline, right? And like, I like, I really like uh, Coach Clawson. And I, I think the world of him and have gotten to know him, you know, over the last uh, three years. But once the ball's kicked off, like, like you're, you're just focusing on doing your job. There's so much, there's so much going on. So he's a competitor. Uh, and one thing I know is uh, it <laughs> when, it's, when it's go time, he, he's going to be trying to put it on us, right? Like they're, they're going to be competitive. They're going to want to win the game. And, and he's not going to be thinking about, oh, that's Coach Elliott over there. No, they're, they're, they're coming. Right, so we got to have our guys with the same mindset because it's going to be it's going to be a it's going to be a battle. Uh, and in terms of the relationship, um, I mean, he's he's gone from being a father figure when he was coaching me as a player, right, to being a mentor as a as a young coach in the business and then a colleague, right. So it's it's kind of had all three phases uh, uh, tied in uh, tied in one. And you know, he's one of the first individuals that I'll call if I have a problem or I have a question. Uh, and you know, I don't think he gets enough credit. Uh, for that, uh, I think that uh, people focus on the wrong thing sometimes uh, when they when they uh, deal with Coach Sweeney because um, he he tells the truth the way he sees it, right? And not many people nowadays, you know, will tell the truth the way they see it, right? And so I value that. Um, but I think if you really know his heart and what he does off the field and how many people he's impacted, not just his players, uh, but uh, family members of the players, man, people in the community. I mean, there, there's nobody uh, that, in my, my opinion, in college football that gives more uh, back than, uh, than Coach Sweeney. So uh, I'm just, man, it's going to be fun to compete. And it's a great, you know, test for our program to see where we are. Uh, that, that, uh, that program there has been the standard in the league uh, for, for a very long time. Man, they're, they're back playing at a very, very high level. Um, and it looks like you know uh, it's going to be you got to go through them uh, to win to win the league uh, with with the way that they're playing. Uh, so it's going to be a good test to see kind of kind of where we are as we build this program. And there's going to be some similarities too. Um, uh, so it'll be a good gauge for us uh, all the way around. What do you remember about Cade Klubnik's recruitment, mm -hmm. and what are you seeing from what he's done, especially the last four or five yeah, years? Yeah, I, I was I was a very small part of it, so I'm not going to take any credit for it. But I do remember some 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 really in depth, uh, mature conversations with uh, with Cade uh, throughout throughout the process. He's a very very uh, mature young man, great family. 
Uh, this guy comes from a great family, very humble. Um, he's got he's got a um, he's very strong in his faith. Uh, so those are the things that I remember. Um, very good athlete. Come from a a unbelievable high school program. You know, one at a high level. Uh, so he had all the the traits and characteristics that you're looking for uh, in a uh, in a high level high level quarterback. Uh, so just you know, happy to see him, you know, kind of kind of persevere through a little bit of adversity, and now he's on the other side of it. It looks like he's you know taking that and 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 managed it the right way, and he's turning it into um, success at a high level. You know, you've talked a lot about player development mm -hmm. over the years. Are there two better examples than Jonas Sanker and Malachi Fields as far as what they came in as and kind of where they've reached in their levels? Yeah, I mean those guys uh, to see them kind of from the day I showed up to kind of where they are. Yes, I think physically both of them have really uh, done a good job of transforming their body, first and foremost. I think that's that's one area that kind of gets overlooked sometimes, you know, in the development process. You got to develop your body. Those guys have, have gone to work, and so physically they look they look great. Uh, then you got to develop your, your fundamentals and your skills, right? And so you see those guys uh, executing at a high level because of the, the, the fundamentals and the skill development and then your knowledge. Right, like, like obviously Jonas is extremely fast, uh, but he knows where he's going, and he gets there a lot faster than maybe how fast he runs because he anticipates, you know. And then you're seeing Mao uh, just having an understanding of of coverage, leverage is allowing him to make some of those catches, you know, because he understands, you know, where he needs to be, where the ball is going to be placed. Uh, so it's just fun to watch those two guys, and and uh, they're two of the the best young men you're gonna, you know, you're gonna. Uh, encounter. Um, they both lead uh, very well uh, on this football team. So, man, grateful to have them um, and, and grateful just to be a small part of, of their development process. You've played in front of one sellout crowd this year, but that was 20,000 fans at uh, Coastal. This will be yeah. 80,000 plus. How do you prepare your guys for being the road team in that atmosphere? Yeah, um, try to get it out the way early in the week. You know, let the guys kind of know, see it before they get there so it, it doesn't catch them off guard. Um, and then just really challenge them to focus on themselves, right? I think that uh, that's one of the, the, the things that, that, I, that I value the most that I learned, you know, while I was there under, under Coach Sweeney is it's, it's never about anybody else, it's about yourself, right? Because at the end of the day, if you take care of, your, of yourself, uh, then you give yourself an opportunity to be successful. So uh, we got to focus on us. And then obviously we have some noise out at practice just to kind of get ready to, to communicate. Uh, but but you, can't, you can't walk in losing to the environment, right? Two things that I, that I, that I challenge the program is don't lose to the logo and don't lose to the environment, right? Um, and so gave them a sneak peek of what it's gonna look like so that we got it out the way on Monday and then we don't have to think about it, talk about it. We can just focus on our process so that when we get down there, man, we're fully locked in and, and not, not distracted. Okay. Uh, Cam Robinson, he was saying he's put in some extra work to mm -hmm. try to become a better blitzer, pass rusher. Have you seen that from him? He's got three sacks this year. What have you noticed of, about his blitzing ability this season? Yeah, I think a lot of it comes from his athleticism. You know, he's a very athletic guy. Uh, but I think what, what, what he's learned and what he's doing a better job is with the timing, right? The timing on, 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 uh, on the pressures and then also, you know, kind of his angles, you know, and, and, and knowing how to attack, you know, different leverages on different, uh, uh, on different individuals that he's, he's blitzing against, right? Because it's not just always coming off the edge. He might have an interior rush, right? There might be some kind of cross action, you know, so he's learning kind of the nuances of, of those things that allow him to, to really, you know, activate his athleticism uh, to, to rush the passer. Davo said earlier today that he likes to sit next to you at coaches' meetings and stuff. And he, <laughs> he's not sure if you like that or not. Um, and then did you all share any text messages when you saw the game come on with the schedule a long time ago? Um, so the first one, I, it, it don't it don't bother me, right? Like I, I kind of knew – I knew my place, right? Like, and, and they would pick at me when I was there because I was I was kind of his fir his first former player that he hired, right? So I kind of knew I knew my place, and uh, so it don't it don't bother me. Um, you know, I might make fun, or the other coaches make fun of it, but like it don't it don't bother me. I, I enjoy seeing him, you know, and, and it's always an opportunity for me to pick his brain and gain a little bit of uh, a little bit of wisdom too. And then I know, you know, another thing is just the competitive nature, man. He's gonna be locked in. He's gonna be taking notes. So man, I'm over there like, hey, I'm gonna be locked in taking notes uh, this the same way uh, he is. And and that's I think that's what you're looking for in any relationship is man somebody that makes you better. 
and that's that's what he uh, that's what he does. And uh, I can't remember if we if we shared a text. I'm pretty sure we did, um, but it wasn't like like. I mean, he operates with class. I operate with class, you know. And 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 but we both want to win. We both want our want our teams to be successful. Uh, we're gonna go about it the right way. Uh, but I don't, I don't remember any like joking or jostling going back and forth. Uh, you were part of that greatness for so long down there. What does this team look like in comparison to those teams? Does it look like those teams, and what what distinguishes this team? Yeah, I think I think when you when you watch them uh, from the offensive perspective, man, you see that man they're very they're very balanced, right? They're very balanced. Uh, they got they got dynamic players at all positions, right? They got a dynamic tight end. Uh, in Brittany Stool, uh, they got a they got a big bruising running back in Phil, and then their skill guys, man, can run, and very similar to to where to where we were. And then it looks like up front, uh, man, they're 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 playing they're playing well together. And then defensively, uh, they 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 look very similar uh, to the teams of the past with them big old bodies inside. Man, they got they got two, well actually two. I say they got six. Uh, they got six of them because they roll them about every other series. They got they got a whole new set of D linemen uh, coming in there, um, so very similar. And then they're fast on the back end, and then their linebackers um, are very similar to the to the ones that we had. So uh, I think where they're playing now, right? They look they look very similar to the uh, to the teams of the past. Obviously, Malachi Fields has big play playmaking mm -hmm. abilities, but in the beginning of the season, Trill Harris was a yep. guy who can really stretch the field. Yeah. Have you seen guys like J.R. Wilson really demonstrate his ability to do that as well? Yeah, uh, J.R. showed it uh, in fall camp, and that's what had us, you know, extremely excited. Now we're kind of getting him back, you know, in the inner groove. So I think you'll see a little bit more come out of him. And um, man, I think Dre has it. You know, Dre has it. It's just it's just a function of you know, kind of every week he's more and more comfortable with uh, with the uh, with the system, and then getting Tyree back, you know, helps us because uh, that gives us um, you know some some legit documented speed uh, down the uh, down the field. And um, wouldn't sell Tyler Neville short, man. He makes he makes some big plays too. Maybe not quite as explosive, but you know, he's he's making some some nice plays as a, as a tight end. So I think we're you know we're we're, we're kind of feeling figuring out how to fill that void that Trail gave us. Um, but but I think we got enough bodies and enough guys that can do it. It's just a, a function of opportunity. We have time for questions from anybody on the Zoom, if anybody has any. Uh, hey, Tony, it's Pete Yacobelli from the Associated Press. Yes, sir. With South Carolina. How are you doing? I'm doing well. How you doing? Good, good. Uh, I'm going to make you look back on things a little <laughs> bit, too. Um, could you have – I'm sure you couldn't have imagined how it – 2003, and you're sitting there with young blood and Curry and all those guys, and this young guy that you don't know anything about walks in as your receivers coach, and the impact that he's had on you, you know, these 20 years later. That's that's kind of, I mean, that's a remarkable situation. Man. Right. Yeah. So, so obviously, man, it was it was a tough situation because I I graduated. I was I was headed out the door. I was going to work. Uh, in the engineering profession, and I came back because Stockstill, who was my position coach, asked me to come back. And then he takes a job in the off season, and then here comes you know Coach Sweeney, and I'm like, man, I'd, I'd finally worked myself up from kind of the bottom to where now I have an opportunity with my position coach that's gonna gonna you know not necessarily start me, but I think I'm gonna play a little bit. Uh, and I got a very there's a, it's a talented room. So you, you, Roscoe Cosby was in that room. Curtis Bayham was in that room. Kelvin Grant was in that room. There was some some really good uh, talented kids. And then Coach Sweeney comes in, and and instantly I could tell like you know what uh, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna get along just fine because similarities in the background just persevering adversity uh, at a young age, and then just his core values uh, align with my core values. So it was. Uh, it was it was it was a god thing, right? When you look at it now that you look back, um, he knew exactly what he was doing when he paired all of us. And 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 you, you speak about it, young blood, Curry, Hamilton, man, they have the same relationship too, right? Uh, to this day, all those all those guys in that room still have a a very good relationship with uh, with Coach Sweeney. Yeah, and he joked, Dabo joked today about that he knows how you think, but you know how he thinks. <laughs> <laughs> is that gonna help you on, uh, on Saturday? Well, we'll see. We'll, we'll see. We'll see which one knows uh, knows. But no, I, I think one of the things that that 
that I learned there was, you know, as an assistant, because he would always talk about uh, him and Coach Stallings and uh, was, you know, the job of the assistant is to make the head coach look good. And in order to do that, you have to understand uh, how the head coach looks uh, so that you can sell his vision and you can push his vision uh, to, the, uh, to the players. Thank you, Johnny. We'll see you Saturday. All right, sounds good. See you then. Yes, sir. Um, Dabo was talking earlier about when he hired you as a running back coach that you maybe were even a little surprised. I was. Done running backs, uh, but he said it was better as a person mm-hmm. than you were that he was going to hire you because he believed in you as a person. Uh, how many? How rare is that for coaches to make decisions that way? And how much do you owe him for seeing that in you as a person that he thought you were going to be a? Oh, a I mean, I wouldn't be. We wouldn't be having this conversation, you know, had he not uh, made that decision. And then he made another. He made another. You know. You know. Tough decision too. When in. Uh, you know. Twenty four after twenty fourteen season when Chad left. You know what he was going to do with the coordinator. I, that surprised me too. I didn't. I didn't think that. You know. He was going to to go the co route and give me the play calling responsibility like that. That surprised me. I was also very surprised uh, about the the running back job. Uh, and and part of it was too. Uh, they had come off a six and seven season and and I know he was battling for his job. And I had just been retained at Furman. So I really, and as we were, we were getting together, because he told me to come to his house so we could sit down and we'd talk, I was kind of preparing myself to be like, Coach, you don't need to hire me. Don't even think about it. I'm good. I'm staying at Furman. I just want you to be successful. Um, because I knew it was a running back job and I hadn't, I hadn't played the position, I hadn't coached the position. Um, but it is rare. And I think, uh, you know, he, he, he proved that you can do things differently, right, than maybe what the status quo is. Uh, and you know his approach is to is to do it with people, believing in people, believing in the human spirit, uh, believing that if you find good quality people uh, and you give them an opportunity, they'll they'll take it, they'll run with it, uh, and ultimately uh, everybody will be successful. So uh, I'm not the only one, uh, and, and I know that, that a lot of the focus is on 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 me and him because of the of the game. But there are so many other individuals that he's done the same thing for uh, because he believed in them. I just got one more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think the the biggest thing is is just telling be myself, right? And be myself, and and man, lead with your heart, and and the the good Lord upstairs will will kind of direct your path. And that's really uh, now that I look back, that's that's what it was. Like uh, I just showed up every single day, and that was one thing, you know, that we talked about there. Uh, you just show up every single day, and you go you go to work. Uh, regardless of of what the circumstances are, and so you hear me talk a lot about competitive stamina here at the University of Virginia, and that's really what what it is: is being able to to work and operate to a standard or push towards a standard, regardless of what circumstances are. And and now that we're kind of on the other side of things a little bit, uh, nobody would ask uh, for for what we had to to. No, well, actually, I say had to. We still live with it every single day. Uh, so we're not we're not done, and we never will be done um, because it's a part of our our new normal. But uh, man, we show up every single day. Uh, we just go to work. We focus on what we can control, uh, and those are all things that that he taught not just me, but everybody that was was part of the organization and is still part of the organization down there. Uh, about I mean, you just 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 show up. Uh, life life's gonna always. Uh, present challenges just like a game's always going to present challenges you just focus on the next play what you can control uh, and eventually you'll 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 look up and you'll like where you're at